Who do you read these days? Who do you like? Do you read science fiction still? Uh, yeah, I probably read more detective stories than I do science fiction. Well, who do you like in detective stories? Grace. Robert Grace. Robert Grace. All right, I have to try. I have not read any of this. Monkey's Raincoat, among other things. He's got some novels about a guy named Joe Pike who's a homicidal maniac, and I get a little (laughs) weary of those because there's not so much story in them as just a lot of self-indulgencies about things you'd, you'd like to do to bad guys, but... Every now and then, that's kind of fun. What would you like to do to a bad guy? But uh, <laughs> I, I, I can I can take only so many novels of those. Um, do you, Kindles do you... are wonderful. You know, you can carry the dang Kindle around, read anywhere. Books. You yeah. stand, find yourself standing in a line at a bank, or the waitress is taking too long for your coffee. Then you can read a few pages. It's uh, it's great. Have they made and, movies? I'm trying to think. They've never made movies out of Moton God's Eye or... Uh... No, we've been paid a fair amount of money and options for a number of our movies. Because I'm thinking, you mentioned Minority Report. A lot of Philip K. Dick no, uh, stories became movies yes. roughly Said, related yeah. to the story. Um, seems like... Boy, roughly related to the to the story, yes, indeed. And roughly. they all came just when poor old Phil... Died. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's just amazing. The money started flowing in just after he couldn't use it. Oh. And boy, did he need it. Oh, that's he, sad. He pretty well died in poverty, you know. He, did you uh, so Did you know, did you know uh, Philip K. Oh, I knew Phil not as well as Tim Powers did. I yeah. mean, nobody knew him as well as Tim Powers did. But yeah, I knew Phil. Uh, there was a big party at a professor's house in Fullerton in the mid 70s and it happened that caltech had a big science fiction convention uh sponsored i think by uh by richard Feynman. i think was one of the sponsors and wow. they brought sir, wow. sir fred hoyle and oh, fred pole and harry harrison and me and larry niven and a whole bunch oh. of other people came to it so they had a big party out in fullerton afterwards and um Phil Dick came to that. He he didn't come to the Caltech conference because he didn't go to things like that much. And um, at the time I talked to him, he had he was married to Tessa. The baby was about a year old, and she had brought the baby with her. And I talked to him a while, and I, I give you some notion of how well I didn't know him. Um, I. I asked him how things were going. He says, fine. I found out later from Tim Powers that Phil was eating dog food at, at uh, that exact time. Uh, uh, they were down to it. They were down to literally down to what Harry Harrison used to call eating money. Um, I didn't know that at the time. He passed away at a uh, young age, 53. Fairly young, and um, he wasn't a very happy man for most of his life. Um, I, I can't say I knew him well. Tim Powers is the one who knew him very well. But if you think of the movies, Total Recall, Blade Runner, yeah. Minority Report we mentioned, Paycheck, The Adjustment Bureau, just so many. Yeah. He was an, he was an idea guy. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't a high technology guy. Not he at all. just assumed the technology he wanted for his stories. Right. He never went into how how it might work or not work, you know. Right. You're the idea guy, aren't you? Isn't that your role kind of in the Niven Pornell? Oh, actually, it's more complicated than that. I come up with some of the ideas. Larry comes up with some of them. It's my job to make them plausible. You add the science. I add... I add science and logic and self-consistency to these things. Larry... Larry is is likely to get an idea and just carry it as far as he goes, and that's good for short stories. Right. But it doesn't make a novel. My my job in these things is to add the continuity so that it um, it, it looks seamless all the way through. Yeah. He writes better than I do. I don't make any claims otherwise. But I... Well, when we're in public, we usually say he writes better than I do, and I think better than he does, and he tends he tends to agree with that. But it's not strictly true, you understand. 
Well, I'm thinking of Ringworld, which is one of my favorite uh, books. But Ringworld wouldn't work, and when he wrote it, it didn't work. And not only that, but in the first edition of it, he had the earth turning in the wrong direction. <laughs> the sun was rising in the uh, west. Well, it wasn't, but a guy was going west to to gain time, um, I mean, to lose time, so... <laughs> It's little things like that, you know. That, that, that may, it's actually really important that you have a consistent universe. And and that Larry doesn't like to do that kind of stuff much. I mean, they've pointed out to him, he's, oh, yeah, well, let's fix that. But um, he, he care. gets this vision of what he wants to say, and he's more important, more interested in telling me. He and Benford work well together on, on, on in that, that bowl of heaven of theirs is a really a great concept. Again, it's well, you read it and you'll see the contrast between that and something like Lucifer's Hammer. Right. You'll see the Pornell influence. No, you'll see the lack of it. <laughs> well, yes, that's what I mean. You'll see what uh, Pornell adds, exactly. And, well, you can see that they tell a story somewhat differently from the way mm -hmm. Larry and mm -hmm. I tell a story. That mm -hmm. That's... I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just that they do it differently from the way we do it. I'm glad to see that you are thriving financially. You're not eating dog food, right? I'm not eating dog food, and one reason for that is electronic book rights. And one thing I'll say to anybody who's listening to us now, um, if if you're contemplating being a writer, and an awful lot of the people who like to watch me do interviews are hoping to figure out how in the hell can I get his job, um, one of the things you understand if for gun sakes don't give a publisher eternal yeah. rights to your electronic book rights it isn't where it it would be unless they're offering an enormous advance you're better off to publish it yourself than to give them eternal life of the contract electronic rights now if you get electronic rights for a term of years and it's a reasonable advance, that's one thing. But I have seen in pocketbooks and Random House and a lot of other places are offering new writers contracts that don't give them much money up front and take the electronic rights forever. Yeah, don't or, do that. I mean, they'll give you some percentage of it, you understand. But they keep they keep the lion's share of the electronic rights forever. And, and as far as I can see... The electronic rights are worth more than the print rights now. If they're not, they will be. Yeah, I agree 100. percent Are all your I mean, books? I look on at Kindle? it. I'm getting. I'm. I'm selling a thousand, more than a thousand copies a month of Lucifer's Hammer That's at about awesome. eight dollars. You multiply those numbers out, and you'll see it's not a bad income. It's awesome, Jerry. It just and that's a happy. forty year old book. Yeah. Now, without that, I. I would have a little bit more. Authors don't have much in the way of retirement, and after 2008, most of them have a lot less yeah. than they, they thought they had. Because yeah. um, we're not very good businessmen. One reason the Berne Convention, the International Copyright Convention, is so simple is that um, uh, Victor Hugo wrote it, <laughs> and he basically said writers are terrible bookkeepers and forgetful and so he wanted to keep it simple no renewals life plus 50 years that's term of contract no no renewal no more anything else um and hugo was enough of a literary giant around when he wrote that which is around the turn of the night of the 20th century um that he was able to get away with the united states didn't go along with it for 75 years after after the Berne Convention, we weren't part of an international. Eventually, they decided to do that, and having done it, then, of course, they added another 20 years to the 50 years so that Disney wouldn't go out yeah. of it. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. The old Mickey Mouse copyright. What's yeah. your? Do you have a favorite book of yours? My favorite book... Not sure. I think the most influential book I wrote was probably a step farther out, which is nonfiction. Right. I guess Hammer is one of my favorites. We, Larry and I had a lot of fun writing that. I like Footfall a lot. Footfall was honest to God science fiction about an alien invasion. I mean, you could say Lucifer's Hammer was a disaster story. 
Oh, yes. Football was about two trunked elephants. <laughs> the intelligent two trunked elephants. You can't say that's not science fiction. <laughs>